This is Talk with Audrey. Welcome back. The FDA recently approved a new use for prolia that helps people with conditions like COPD, asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, who are at risk for bone loss from taking corticosteroids to manage their conditions. With the details, Dr. Ronald Dimke. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Appreciate you joining me. So what is corticosteroid-induced osteoporosis? Patients who take uh, some medication for chronic inflammatory diseases, such as those you've mentioned, plus some others, take a medication called corticosteroids, of which prednisone is the most common prototype. And patients taking that medication uh, find that uh, there's a higher risk for ultimately losing bone because of a mechanism directly related to corticosteroids that inhibits some of the bone cells and the bone thins, tends to deteriorate inside to some extent, and the propensity to fracture becomes quite high. So the risks are, are great in some of these patients, but not all. And this is something that when you're on, when a patient is on prednisone um, for a long period of time, for any period of time, really should discuss with their physician whether they are really at risk for fracture and whether they need to be treated for this. Keep in mind, patients who have been on prednisone in a, in a recent study for at least three months had a 17 times, at, at a dosage of 10 milligrams a day or more, had, a, had an increased risk of vertebral fractures 17 times normal um, over that period of time and a hip risk fracture, a hip fracture risk of seven times greater than normal just for having been on the medication for at least three months. So that's a substantial risk. Are there other steroid medications that could also cause the same issue? There's, there's a family of, of, of medications in the same class as prednisone that are not as commonly known or thought of, but yes, they do exist. So who's at risk? You mentioned someone who's been on it, uh, say, for three or four months at 10 milligrams? Or more, yeah, 10 milligrams or more. But really, uh, when, when we look at this, and in my own experience, I've been doing this for a lot of years, um, when we find that there is a correlation between the dose and the duration of time you're on the medication, the indication uh, for prolia is for patients who are on or will be on prednisone 7.5 milligrams per day for at least, who are suspected to be on it, for at least six months and could have been on it already or just starting it. But if you're anticipated you're going to be on it for six months, it's one of the indications of treatment if you have the uh, uh, GIOP or GIOP and are at risk for fracture. So it's not every patient, but your doctor sitting down with you can define your risks for this and tell you whether or not you need to be treated. How is it diagnosed? Oftentimes, simply listing your medications, how long have I been on prednisone, what's the dose been, and they can check a bone density, which is somewhat helpful, um, and your risk for fracture. Those kinds of things are all put into the equation, and then a decision can be made. But your physician, honestly, who knows your overall status as well as the disease for which you're being treated, will be in the best position to decide what medication is appropriate for you. All of these medications available, of which Perlia is the newest approved, all of them have benefits and potential side effects. So it's something that you need to have tailored to your situation. Well, I always encourage people to check with their physician specifically because that's really important. Yeah, because patients don't often know they have a problem when they're taking a medication like this. I see. That's why I say knowledge is power. And if you don't know, you don't know to ask the question. So there it is. That's right. That's right. What does prolia actually do in this instance to help alleviate the problem? Well, it's, it's a complicated sense of what, what happens in, in the bone, but in, in, it helps to build, to, to prevent the resorption of bone, the loss of bone, which is an ongoing process. Bone is always being formed and taken away. This helps to stop the taking away of the bone, so it allows the bone to build up more and become stronger. That, that is kind of the mechanism. Well, that's very interesting. I think most people, most women anyway, are probably more familiar with prolia for osteoporosis, postmenopausal osteoporosis specifically. 
Correct. That's right. And at what age should women be concerned about postmenopausal osteoporosis? It's actually a good question, and the way I like to approach that is this whole process of bone loss begins earlier in life. So as young adults, we should be sure we're on a balanced diet and that we exercise. Exercise is important in terms of trying to prevent bone loss and, in, in, a, in a small sense, building bone. But over time, when we hit the menopause, when someone hits the menopause, there's such a hormonal change with lack of estrogen and many other things. What happens then is that this remodeling of bone begins to change in the sense that bone is always being taken away and being formed. After the menopause, the ability to form bone lags behind the bone being taken away, and as a result, one has a loss of bone, thinning of bone, and then the term osteoporosis, which means porous bone, they become brittle, and then fracture risk starts to increase. So that's the period of time when up to something like 20% of bone could be lost in the first five to seven years following the menopause. So it's a significant amount of bone loss during that period of time. Absolutely. And again, I can't stress enough that you need to check with your doctor. But if you have COPD, asthma, or rheumatoid arthritis, and you've been taking corticosteroids and think that you might be eligible for this new use, check with your doctor as well. Dr. Ronald Inkey has been my guest. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, Audrey. Actually, the best place is your physician because he can put it in the context of your other problems or issues or diseases. So he's the person or she is the person to check with. I'll be right back after this.